five, four, three. And counting down, five, four, three. George! Darling, what are you and doing? And camera one. What are you doing? What are you doing? Well, nothing, darling, I was just working up. Moving slightly on two. Okay, Does anyone what? think young married couples actually talk to each other like that? Wish me luck, darling. Fuck off. Righto, fucking off now, darling. <laughs> Why can't I come? Your wife... Because it makes me nervous. Thinking about you being out there somewhere. I don't want to be thinking about you. I want to be thinking about what I've got to do, you know? You understand, don't you? Right. That's... smashing. I wasted time, and now doth time waste me. For now hath time made me his numbering clock. My thoughts are minutes, and with sighs they jar their watches on unto mine eyes. Bloody great. Pitch perfect. So what does that mean? It means the only trajectory is... <whistles> so tomorrow we rip the guts out of it and start all over again. Any little tricks you've come to cherish? Forget them. Yes? Silence. Good. Come on, you. Come on. You had it tonight, Nut. No. The rhythm, clarity, meaning as clear as a bell. And chain by the ankle, five scene five, that really works. Then come up and sing. Was that my idea? No, mine. Well, you knock Gilgood and his cronies into a cocktail. I don't know about that. You are ringing the death of of his kind. That was a Richard for the masses you just gave. Now you stay focused. Get the histories under your belt. After that, we need to see your Macbeth. And then, and only then, will you be ready for the Danish dithera. Combination of ruggedness and sensitivity is very rare. But you, you have it. He didn't let us go, actually. We all felt we needed Very him. nearly an armful. <laughs> Where do lines like that come from? Not nearly an armful. Very nearly an armful. Just perfect. Rhythm, yeah. So, what do you want to do next? We can tell you what we don't want to do. We don't want to do another series. No. We want actors, not comics. We want room to experiment, lots of different ideas. Yeah, and we don't want uh, one set of characters, same location, week in, week out. OK. What? I mean, OK. Do anything you want. 
Give me ten half hours, different story each week. Call it The Galton and Simpson Show. Write them, direct them, star in them, anything you like. Really? Just give me something gritty, you know? Something with some balls. Right. What do we do now, then? You heard him. Anything. How many have we done? Three and a half. Seven more to go. Six and a half. I saw a uh, rag and bone man in the street on the way over. A rag and bone man? What an awful premise for a sitcom that would be. How many are we up to? Five now. And a half. Right, this rag and bone man. Down the hill, real London type, uh, on his rounds, meeting people up, up Chelsea. A class confrontation, we've done that, impasse. No, no, because um, this rag and bone man has dreams of better things. Uh, he comes home at the end of the day with aspirations thwarted. And what, he soliloquises? Talks to himself about it? I know what soliloquises means. Oh, is that for me? Thank you very much. Well, all right. There has to be a second rag and bone man waiting. Back at the yard, at the end of the day, he uh, listens to our man talking about his dreams. And pours cold water on him. Tells him he's a bloody idiot. Yeah. Why? Because he's older than the first one. He's, he's, he's missed his chance. That's what we do. We play the truth about that man. Yeah. Other companies wouldn't do that. You know, there's all lovely voices and silk costumes and everything. We'd put the reality on the stage. All right, but... If the older rag and bow man's being so nasty to the younger rag and bow man, why doesn't the younger rag and bow man just tell him to fuck off and find somewhere else to work? Oh, OK, we get paid fuck off. But we get the same fuck off, you know? And what well, we are, in the middle of the East End, playing to people who never go to the theatre. I mean, it's a privilege, really, in many ways. Um... Because... I used to be in rep. I keep thinking maybe I should go back. Oh, no, you don't want to do that. God, no. That's all in the past. That's that's deadly, that is. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, they're not looking for truth. Those rep types. They just want to get the performance set and grind it out. Because these aren't just any two rep moments. No. 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 Again and again. They are father and son. My idea of hell. Can you imagine if we got Harry Corbin? What about the old man? Does it matter if we get Harry H. Corbin? Bloody brilliant. Really, uh, uh, you know, real, it's real people in, in real situations on the BBC team before. About bloody time, public service and all that. I, uh, yeah, I would love to do it. You're doing a sitcom? What? No, it's not a sitcom. It's half an hour long. Written by Britain's foremost sitcom writers, surely that... Honestly, love. If you haven't read it, it's practically Beckett. Bloody tragic. Does Joan know? It's right up her street. It's their kitchen sink. Have you told her? Well, it's money in the bank, I suppose. Who's playing the father? Uh, Wilfred Bramble. Oh, <laughs> yeah, he'll be good. I've seen him. Yeah. Very funny. Is he? Doesn't really matter, it's the son's story. Father's just a, a feed, really.
Mr. Corbett. Tom Sloan. Harry. Please. Our writers. Uh, Harry. Ray. Ray. Alan. Alan. I just want to say that I really, really like your writing. Oh. Well, we really, really like your acting. It's good to get the bullshit out of the way first, isn't it? <laughs> Oh, hey. <laughs> Good sign. <laughs> Slight weight of a godo, isn't it? Except godo never bleeding shows up. Hello. Good morning. I'm terribly sorry to be so late this morning. Absolutely awful journey. Please do forgive me. Superscript. Hugely entertaining. And, of course, may we introduce Harold. Hello, son. Hello, Dad. How lovely to meet you. Why don't you take your coat off and make yourself comfortable? And we can get started. <laughs> His father surveys the day's load of junk on the cart, disdainful. What's all this, then? Have you been out all day just with this? This load of rubbish? We're not gonna... We don't wanna do the voices or anything. Oh, I thought, um, not yet. I do mind, I, I do hope that won't, um... No. I'm sure that's, uh... You off the book already? D uh, yeah. It's just me, and I, I find it, it prevents me getting stuck in to the character. This load of rubbish. Oh, don't start, Dad. Where's the lead? I especially asked you to keep an eye out for the lead. Now you get up on the cart, you're so good at it. I'm sick and tired of sitting up there, watching that great backside all day long. You go out tomorrow. You know I can't get up on the cart no more. Not with my legs. Yeah, well, that's it then, isn't it? You don't want to say nothing, do you? Otherwise, I'll check this lot in and be off. I'm sick and tired of you and a yard and the horse and a cart. What do you know? What could you do? Yeah, don't worry about me, mate. I'll be all right. I've had... An offer. Now, uh, uh, don't worry about me, mate. I'll be all right. I've had an offer. No. Uh, Are we, uh, don't worry about me, mate. I'll be all right. I've had an offer. No. <coughs> uh, Are we, uh, don't worry about me, mate. I'll be all right. I've had an offer. Better? Yeah. Great. Really yeah. great. Don't worry about me, mate. I'll be all right. Because I've had an offer. Yeah! Get out of it. More like that. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> lovely day, isn't it? Absolutely lovely. Very warm. Yes, it is. Cheerio, then. May I? Time to mess you up a bit. This is going to be one of the good ones. Lovely script. And Larry H. Corbett on television. I don't understand what the fuss is about, personally. All this method rubbish. Whatever happened to just acting? Been doing it since he was in there. And with great skill too, may I say. I saw you in May Gray the other year. Wonderful cameo performance. Yeah. Oh yeah. 
Yes, yes, yes. This is a fantastic space. Really, just the right feel. Claustrophobic and... Uh, oh, wow. Yeah. Really down at heel. It's perfect. Okay. We better clear out so they can let the audience in. There's an audience? Yes. We don't use laughter tracks. Oh, not unless something so bloody dreadful and I'd bugger laugh. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, it's such a change what I'm doing. Yeah. Well, I'll, uh, I'll go and open the gate, shall I? <coughs> Move. Move. You rotten <laughs> Move! 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 I can't go! I can't get away! I'll go and put the kettle on, shall I? You know what you've got here, don't you? Make us a nice cup of tea. You've got a pilot for a whole new series. <gasps> no, Tom. <laughs> Bloody marvellous. They lapped it up. Yeah, they did, rather, didn't they? I thought, um... I thought they laughed a lot. <laughs> I feel a classic coming on. Anyone fancy a drink? Please. Oh. Wilfred, a drink? Uh, no, thank you. I thought I might just go. Well, cheerio, all. Goodbye, Harry. Lovely to work with you. Likewise, Rupert. Thanks a lot. Sure you won't stay for just one? Oh, you know the old son. He's got to get right to his bed at his age. <laughs> Why not? Because there's no scope in it. Such a tiny, close scenario. Just two characters. That's who learns of each other. Gets tired very quickly. And just how many hilarious situations did you get out of Hancock and Sid James living on top of each other in a house in Cheam? So Harold, mm. no. Man of issues would have been a lie. Interesting character, though. A lot of inner conflict. Well, it was good. Mm. And you were amazing. <sighs> I was all right. Excellent was a bit shaky. <sighs> Strange telly. Yeah. Don't get a chance to do it again. Bang, that's it. So what's next? Uh, Henry V at the Old Vic, I think. Great. That's what I love about being an actor. You rag and bone man one minute, king the next. <laughs> or vice versa. Mm. <coughs> what's that? A 
I got the role on the Frost programme. Yeah? It's all done. Oh, the script's fantastic and the people are lovely. Don't read it now. Oh, Harry. I oh, know, no. Because no. I want to do this. Where's that series I want, boys? No one's going to watch it, Tom. It's too working class, too grimy. You seen the ratings they get for Coronation Street? Taking you out in that. Why not? Because it's all bloody tits and arse, that's why not. You'll have every fellow in the place after you. Uh, it doesn't matter if. It matters to me. Harry, do you really think that I. Put something else on. I'll wear a sack if you want. Just take me out. Step to and son. It'll be huge. Well, they'll never do it. Corbett will turn down a serious flat. He's a serious stage actor. Yeah, he's Britain's Marlon Brando, for fuck's sake. Harry? You're joking, aren't you? How's that any better? Look, I think this just stopped being funny. I'm not trying to be we funny. Either go out or we don't. Um, not taking me out tonight in this dress would be a very, very bad move. Don't answer that. We are having a row. Hello? I'm having a row. Hello, Tom. How's it going? Let's talk, Stepdad. The Rag and Bow Men. We think it'd make a terrific series. I don't know, Tom. A series? Yes, but look. You'd reach more people in one night than you would in ten years in the theatre. Real social commentary. This stuff really is for the masses, Harry. What do you think? Harry? Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, great. Shave then. You shaved yesterday. Never knowed you to have two shaves in one week before. Must be meeting somebody important if you're having to have a shave. But don't keep going on while I'm shaving. This is sharp. I've just honed it. Oh, I don't want to go meet a bird with bits of fag paper all over my face, do I? Ah, meeting a bird, are you? I see. That's why you're tarting yourself up. Birds now, is it? Yeah. So now you know I'm meeting a bird. Is that all right, Dad? Can I go, Dad? I won't be late home, Dad. I won't get in any trouble. Can I go out, Dad? Please, Dad, please, Dad. Yeah, let's see your lip. <laughs> well, are you not eating? Not actually very hungry. Right, well, fair enough. Why are you doing the voice? Try to uh, uh, bed it down, get it consistent. I wonder what the wind doesn't change, old boy. <laughs> Must say, I think you've really found something special with Albert. We got right under his skin. 
Mm -hmm. Thank you. Have a nice holiday, Wilfred. You can go away for long. Brought back some rather pretty bits and pieces for the flat. I say, I say, I say. Have you seen the crystals on that makeup girl? Huh? Bit of all right? <sighs> Tremendous. <laughs> He tried to explain the scene to me this afternoon. Did he? Yes. He said, in this scene, the father character is trying to pull the wool over the eyes of the son character, as if I'm some bloody simpleton. <laughs> really? I don't need to find the Albert within myself. I put on the costume and act. What's the very... Do you, um, get out much? Yes. What do you mean? Well, you know, go for drinks. Meet nice people. Yes. Not that it's heavy at all. Sorry. Only the wheat chief's very nice. Have you um in Fitzrovia? Is it? Hmm. You might say it was Bona. <laughs> they saw you coming, mate. Forty quid down the drain. You'll never make any money, you've got no brains. A rotten rag and bow man is all you ever were, and a rotten rag and bow man is all you'll ever be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's bloody fantastic. They're lovely script, you know. They're really... They have a visceral quality to them. It's all too rare on telly now, they Visceral? Yes. How's Wilfred shaping up? He's good, you know, he's, uh... <sighs> he's very funny. And now, on BBC television, a new comedy series, Steptoe and Son. <laughs> TV, TV is the thing this year, this year. It's the show. It's a bit bigger than Richard and Stratford, isn't it? TV is the thing this year. I knew it was a good idea. <laughs> you think Wilfred's getting all this? I was in a fix, got on the phone, called my man, said get a hit, daddy, as fast as you can. TV is the thing this year. Ah. My Lord Chief Barber, distinguished guests. My trouble is when I mean something, I can't say it. So all I can say is I don't believe it. Thank you very much, everybody. And I'd like to say thanks to him, too, because uh, not only is he a terrific chap to work with... Don't breathe on it. You'll get microbes all over it. <laughs> I think I'm starting to be the son out of the business. Over to you, Harold. 22 million viewers a week, gentlemen. What did I tell you? Three cheers for us, eh? Yes. Willie, you coming for a drink? I, uh... Oh, come for a drink for once in your life, you little little bastard. I, uh... Why not? OK. Hooray for us, eh? Yeah. Cheerio. All right, Wilfred. As I said to my wife, Mary, last night, uh, the pleasure that I hope to receive in this white heat of our forthcoming copulation <laughs> will be no place for outdated missionary positions <laughs> or lie back and think of England attitude. <laughs> Hold on. Joe! 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 Oh, hi! Oh, yeah. Hello, Nut. Oh, yeah. Have you, uh, have you seen our little telly? Well, yes. We just won an award. Yeah, well, I'm sure the money's very good. No, it's, it, no, it's not what I did it. Still, have you, you should start looking at it. It's, um, like the tension they generate between the, the father and the son is like the age of capitalists, you know. Uh, and... Actually, no, um, I'm in a bit of a hurry. Bob Pony first night tonight. But you take care. Where are you? Only 
one. One roll, there'll be other Macbeth. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Who? Finney. You're welcome to it, Macbeth. It's too gothic for me. Yeah. Come here. Fucking Frost, what's that? <laughs> it's dross, it's middle class fucking wank. Come on. Give me a dad, give me a good dad. Come on. I've got fucking rights. A second series. I've stepped up. Oh, you're not. Yeah. Oh, no. I like Harold. I think it's a. It's a tragic, intriguing working class figure. Harry, I really don't think. I've decided. Come on then. Well, are you all right now? Not you, Keir. You never have done. All the good it's done. I shouldn't be doing heavy work like this. Yes, thank you. Not you, Keir. You never have done. I shouldn't be doing work like this. Heavy. I shouldn't be doing heavy work like this. I shouldn't be doing heavy work like this. Uh, perhaps we should take a break. sure of yourself, aren't you? It fades, you know, youth. It ends. I've still got it. That's not fair. Dinner. 
fucking David fucking Frost. I was wondering if we could stop calling each other and Mr. and Mrs. My name is Albert. Oh, well. All right, then. Albert. What's your handle? What? Your handle. Your name. Oh. This episode, the stepmother. Yeah. It's really, I mean, in many ways, it's about the father. I mean, Harold's the reactive character. Uh, well, yeah. You know, coming up with different scenarios every week is quite difficult. I'm sure. Yeah, it was to sort of focus occasion there. It just keeps it fresh. Right. And he is good. Yeah, he's good. He's brilliant. You might want to be careful. Not why is the show so popular? Well, it's your, it's your classic comedic setup, isn't it? Mm -hmm. it's the double act. We don't want him to read me for Vanya at Liverpool. We don't want him to read me. Scouse bastards. Oh, Harry, I'm sorry. <sighs> That's all right. He's got the lead in a film, playing a rich property developer. Oh, that's fantastic. A Million Miles from Shepherd's Bush, a feature film for the cinema. Thank you very much. So fuck Steptoe and fuck his son right up the arse. No more of that. OK, that's great. I'm not supposed to tell you this, but the BBC called. I mean, you're not supposed to tell me. It was This Is Your Life. No. No, all right? You told them to sod off. I mean it. You don't know anywhere near me and I will fucking divorce you. Ladies who do, 48, take one. <clears throat> Action. Ring, ring. Miss Perkins, get in here right away. I need to speak to you about the Morley account, please. Thank you. Cut. So, uh, what? what? Is that all right? It's fine. It, it's it's fine. It, it's just that we thought it might be more interesting if Ray was... Um, Raymond. Oh, Ray, Raymond. Yeah, Raymond. It was more of a, a barra boy kind of character. You know, he, he's worked his way up from the he's, gutter, but uh, he, he never forgets his roots. That, yeah, that type of thing? I don't know, but, but he's... He, <clears throat> right, I mean, uh, like more of a, a, a Kulak figure. I'm kind of... If you like. Yeah. OK. Right. Quiet, please. We're going again. <laughs> so, go on, let's go. <clears throat> Ladies who do, 48, take two. Action. Ring, ring. Action. Ring, ring. Oh, Miss Perkins. Get in here right away. I need the Morley account. Chop, chop, chop! Cut. That's it. Brilliant, you know? That's really, really... Funny. It's funny. Gorgeous, eh? <laughs> yeah, I am, aren't I? I'm absolutely ravishing. What the fuck am I doing in this bloody awful film? You know, I was thinking that you and I should, like, maybe get it on sometime, you know? Like, behave rudely together. Do you like role play? Hmm. How about I play someone who really doesn't fancy you?
Harry, just ringing to make sure you'll be signing for the next series of Steptoe. You're not going to be leaving us, are you? I saw Lady Zoo do the other day. Oh? Huh? At first, no, I thought it was great. No, no. I released it at the wrong time. Yeah, well, well I thought you were very good, actually. Actually, I've got an interview about the art of acting coming up. Well, have you seen uh, Finney's Hamlet yet? No, oh, it's good. It's great, yeah. Good for Albert. What happened to that uh, Vanya you're up on? I kind of went off for it, you know. I kind of got off theatre. It's going through a pretty funny phase at the moment. It's not really something I want to be a part of. out of the theatre workshop was truth. Absolute searching for truth. And then this truth uh, tailored to the uh, uh, medium known as theatre. If we could uh, turn now to Steptoe and Son, your most yeah. famous creation, the Rag and Bone Men. Well, the Rag and Bone, not mean anything. I mean, I'm not interested in making a documentary about Rag and Bone Men. You know, it's uh, when Harold, it, the domestic work, is over and done with in five, ten minutes. You know, it's all politics. It's about sex. It's about uh, general economics. A thousand and one things. The church, whatever you care to mention. But it's certainly not about uh, the rag and bone business. And none of it, surprisingly enough, uh, relies on uh, double takes, pratfalls, Joey Joey, grimaces, whatever you want to call it. It relies on the words and the timing uh, and being faithful, being true to the subject matter. Are you drawing Harold from your experiences with your own father? Oh, that would be difficult, Clive, since I never met the man. Um, well, your mother then? She died when I was four months old, so... So one imagines... Uh... It's this loss which you're drawing from when... Uh... Uh, uh, no, I, I don't think so. Hmm. Moving on. Did I do that? It only added to the scene. Whatever it takes. Is it fucking worth it, though? <laughs> Gentlemen, another truly wonderful show. Drink? Harry. Do you know, I think I'm just going to slope off, Tom. That's all right. Surely I can tempt you, Wilfred. Why not? Good evening, sir. I'm arresting you for soliciting for an immoral act. 
You do have the right to remain silent. Please don't do this to me. You don't understand. Please. Come along, sir. No, please, this is a mistake. Oh. I'm not a homosexual. I'm not. The very thought disgusts me. You went into those toilets to make an illegal assignation. To inveigle another man into taking part in a loathsome sexual act. That isn't true. But you are divorced from your wife. I pinned everything on that marriage. And yet it failed. You, sir. May the court ask why? You had a son together. My wife had a son. Mr. Bramble! 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 24-year-old lodger. <laughs> Lodger's name was Roger. <laughs> Roger the Lodger, come on. Young Lodger having it away with his wife. Some Lothario bedding anything in sight. No wonder he doesn't like you very much. Oh, just get me something, anything. Walk on, understudy, I don't care. Just not in the fucking UK. Ah. Wilfred. Before we start, I should like to announce that I don't plan to do another series of this. Look, if this has anything to do... I've landed a role in a Broadway musical. Broadway? We, like New York Broadway? It's not Catford. I'm sorry about that, but I'm sure you understand. Besides, it's not good for you, doing the same thing year in, year out. It's the best thing that could happen, really. It's not good doing the same thing year in, year out, is it? So go on to the agent, get some proper work. <sighs> Super timing, darling. I think it's time to move on, Harry. <laughs> back. But do you want me back? Yes. Why? The Bristol's, you know. I miss them terribly. They've been able to iron my shirts. I don't know how I'll cope. Love you. you know. I just think for any marriage to work, there has to be at least one adult. My dear, it was you, but it isn't, is it? the door. You know the way out. Oh, don't. 
No, no, you've always been adult. I'm being grown up. Please, go. Will you be a... Oh, yeah. I'll be fine. I'm used to people walking out on me. Look all those spells you've got, that brunette you've been fucking, haven't you? Indeed I have. The old man was always more important than we thought. Give me options. One, cancel. Out of the question. The ratings. Try again. So we cast the old man? He's not great with the lines, but he is really, really good. And I don't think we could get another actor who could capture the chemistry that Wolf has with Harry. You're probably right. So, three, redevise. Write the series without the old man in it. How? Kill him off. Series six, episode one, the funeral of Harold Stantone. Harold stands by his father's grave, weeping. And he goes home and uh, can't face being on his own. Everything reminds him of the old man. His hat, his cardi, his teeth. Then there's a knock on the front door and it's a young lad. 19, 20. David Emmys. Perfect, rising young star. He says, excuse me, mister, but my mum said that 20 years ago, you and her had a liaison, and uh, I was the result. So, hello, Dad. <laughs> Harold looks at the camera, shock on his face, but also a kind of joy. He's not on his own anymore. Roles reversed. Step toe and son. All over again. At last, progression, something new. When can I sign? I'm in. Wolf's back. One of these days, I'm going to up and leave. I've, uh, I've heard that one before. Oh, yes. Yes, you have. I wasn't sure if I should come. The come up and see, eh? How long till then? Um... Four months. When you're sure. It's definitely yours. Line. Step to. I'm quite famous, you know. You're doing another one? Yeah. Why? The money. All right. I'll put the kettle on, shall I? Yeah. Thank <laughs> you. 
front gate too open for me, boys. You know the BBC is going to be in colour from now on, don't you? Chance to breathe new life into the nation's favourites. Z cars in colour, Dixon and Doc Green in colour, and of course, Steptoe and Son. There's nothing left to write about. We've exhausted every possible scenario, every imaginable situation that two rag and bone men could feasibly find themselves in. Then up the ante a bit. Let your imaginations go. Find some new setups. Where from? You know what? Let's just make it really fucking funny. Do you have a nice holiday, Will? Yes. Hong Kong. Very nice. Did you bring back any pretty little things for the flat? Yes, one or two. Wish me luck, darling. It's all right. It's all right. You've got something to do. You've got a script to read or something. I've given it up, haven't I? Well, good luck, darling. Look, we're not. I mean, I don't know. You know. Before we start, I have a question. By the way, this plot line for episode one Hercules dies on the Gold Hawk Road. Yeah. Harold has to sell him to the Knackers Yard. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's fucking a dead horse, surely. <laughs> what did you give him for your audition? Hamlet? Shylock? Henry V? No, it was all sort of thrust upon me. Uh, the leading man dropped out. He was transferred to another bus depot. And I, I was there, so I just got up and did it. What? Uh, Marlon Brando, the taxi scene from On the Waterfront. Well, you know. Oh, Charlie, Charlie, Charlie. I, 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 I could have been world-class Charlie. You know, uh, I could have been a contender. I could have been someone Charlie instead of a bum, which is what I am. Oh, Charlie. Oh, Ch Charlie. Oh, Charlie. <laughs> is it me? Fuck's sake, of course it's you. I've done the setup. I'm waiting for the punchline. It's always going to be you. I have wasted time. Now doth time waste me. Oh. Cheer up. Being gay is well. We're all legal now. Hurrah. On the stage? <laughs> and why not? <laughs> oh, stop it, man. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. I fail to see anything amusing. Oh, hello, darling. Oh, hello, darling. <laughs> Lovely, darling. I saw your Hamlet, darling. <laughs> Up yours, darling. Kiss my backside, darling. Not like that at all. Ah, of course it is. Actors, they're all puffs. <laughs> Here, Mr. Are you an actor? 
Peter. No. I'm a wagon boat man. And that's all I'll ever be. I'm a rag and bone man, and that's all I'll ever be. Where do these lines come from, I wonder? Harry. You know what you are? What? You're a father. That's what you are. something I've got to do. Hey, Harry. Uh, Harry. Could I just have a quick word with Wilfred? From Scotland, who do you do? You got the old two accents. Hello. Uh, what is it? French. It's French. All right. So bonjour. My name is Milan. Harry. Harry. Bonjour. It's your agent. Hello. Okay. Bad news first. We've had a note from the carry on. Who got it? Bernard Breslau. Well, they know him, you see. Yeah. But the Panto is now a definite yes, so with that and the first well, lad... It's really proper work. I need to work. How'd you fancy doing a tour of Australia? Australia? Doing a stage version of Steptoe and stuff. They love it over there, apparently. And they've already got Wilfred on board, so... You don't have to, Harry. What do you think? Harry? Harry. Stay tuned for a glimpse of the Bramble and Corbett genius. An episode of Steptoe and Son is coming up in just a couple of moments. <laughs> 